to turn that thing off! So the reaction to how loud music is differs quite a bit. So we're gonna have to break it down and calculate and show some examples. This is Ken from Audio Talk, and is this loud or not? So how loud a sound is, is called the loudness or SPL standing for sound pressure level. It's measured by decibels and often we use the term, the abbreviation for that, which is called DB. The ear is a little bit tricky because it's picking up sounds in a logarithmic fashion. In a logarithmic manner or fashion means that just to make a tiny change in sound pressure level, uh, let's say that just, just to increase so that it's just audible that now it got louder is about three decibels from a given, uh, any given level. And to obtain those three de decibels, we need twice as much power behind it physically. So if you want something to play twice as loud, like in your ears, you will need 10 times as much power to obtain that. So to get something really loud, you have to pick a real good fight with physics. But to get you an idea of how loud some things are, I brought in some examples. So ordinary conversation between two people is about 60 to 65 decibels. But I am sure that there's a family out there that can tune out the vacuum cleaner and nobody's even noticing that that thing is on and the conversation is going. But then that's about 75 decibels that that thing is going at. However, I would look into some counseling if you cannot drown out the lawnmower. That thing is going at about 90 decibels. That level is also about where all these little hefty boom boxes you see in the market, they are around that level. 90, you know, if you really have a powerful one, you might get them up to about 100 decibels, but that's also about it. But to get to 110 decibels, you're gonna have to go from portable to draggable because that's about the level of a chainsaw. So you're typically looking at like a small PA speaker, like a stage, some stage equipment, DJ equipment, or it could be that you made your own speaker of a similar kind of power, maybe two eight inch or two 10 inch woofers uh, and some tweeter, that sort of thing. Uh, you'll be around that 110 decibels. The 120 decibel mark, so that's where we like really consider if, if we want this or not. 130 decibels is pain regardless of the previous motivation, I would say. So how will we obtain this party pain? There is three main elements that you have to take into this account. The efficiency of the speaker called the sensitivity and measured in dB. The popular power limit measured in watts and often given credit to the whole thing, but just an element of it. Amplifier power, how much juice is coming to that speaker. Each of these has an element of oranges to apples. So we have to get more specific to get to know the outcome and how loud it's going to be. Well, let's take for the heck of it, them in reverse order, amplifier power and how much juice is coming to the speaker. When an amplifier is advertised at 2000 watts, you have to be a little suspicious and look really into that data. Many times what they're addressing is the power consumption, like how much power is it pulling from the wall, like from your outlet, or from a battery if that was not what you were pulling the energy from. That's not a data you can use to calculate loudness or your SPL, if you will. 
The reason why you cannot use that is because that the electronics of that amplifier makes a lot of difference in this case. So just because you're consuming 2000 watts doesn't mean you're getting 2000 watts. As a matter of fact, you will always have a loss in between those two. And some amplifiers would actually only give you 200 watts out of the 2000. Now, they're not that common anymore, but it is not uncommon that you would only get 600 watts out of it. Some amplifiers would actually give you all the way up to like 1800 watts out of the 2000, but you will get less at some, some, at some level. So it's important that you look at what this amplifier has as an output. The output for most amplifiers will be something that's addressing two times and then something, because it will have a left and a right output. Now there is amplifiers out there, there is mono, that means that they only have one plus and one minus coming out and you will just have one of them. This output would also be mentioned by either RMS or which would also have another name is continuous power, which is like an average of power coming out of it, which is very honest that I really like. But then you also have what's called music power or peak power, which is like little peaks of power, if you can imagine, uh, that is measuring like the very top of those. And so typically between RMS and music power, the music power will be rated as twice as much as the RMS power, but in reality, they are one of the same types of power. So that's why I like to go with RMS continuous power to calculate with that. Another difference of when we we're talking about the amplification and the power coming out of the amplifier is that it's affected by the speaker's impedance. The impedance is the resistance of your speaker. So here we got Ohm's law coming into effect. So this, the amplifier is going to give out some kind of voltage and on eight ohms, that's going to give a current amperage. If you lower that to half of that so that it's twice as easy for the electrons to get from plus to minus, you're increasing the amperage by double and that increases the effect, the power by double as well. So it's important to notice that because if you have an amplifier that says two times 50 watts, you have to know if that's at four ohms or eight ohms to really know what it's going to be doing. Because when you come with your speaker, that's going to have either one of those four or eight or perhaps six ohms will be right there in the middle but you will need it to calculate how many decibels we're gonna be raising that roof with. So on to the next one, which was the popular, ever popular, always getting the credit, power limit of the speaker. How many watts is this speaker? And of course, it's a major aspect of this, but also here, just like the amplifier, you have to look at, are we looking at continuous power? or music power, peak power. So that's also one to look for here. And again, I really like the continuous power, also called RMS. And lastly, we got the efficiency of the speaker called the sensitivity measured by dB or decibels. And that's either at one watt consumed or 2.83 volts. So we're, we're talking about like how much sound pressure are we getting when we apply a certain amount of energy from the amplifier. So you see how much that thing will affect your, your outcome in the end. Like how much are you getting for each of these watts here? So let's take an amplifier rated at 
two outputs left and right, 50 watts each at four ohms, RMS, continuous power. The speakers we're gonna be putting, we're gonna connect to each of these outputs are gonna be 100 watt each, RMS, four ohms as impedance, sensitivity at one watt, we're getting 93 decibels of sound pressure level. Like what we talked about in the beginning, just to raise it audible, but the three decibels, we need twice as much juice to get there. So that means that two watts would give us 96 decibels. So twice the juice would be four watts that will give us 99 dB. Eight watts will give us 102 dB. 16 watts will give us 105 dB. 32 watts will give us 108. Now we're getting close to the limit of the amplifier. The next step is 64 watts, you know, which is twice 32 is 111. So rea in reality, we're probably getting about 109 dB at this power, at the 50 watt RMS. And we're not gonna be able to go all the way up to 100 watt RMS on these speakers, but because of the sensitivity, that's where we're gonna end up, 109 dB. Now we had two of them. So that's also twice the sound pressure level. So 112 total, 112. And if we wanna get flashy and throw in like peak levels, uh, we could say 115. So definitely we got a really good contender to beat that chainsaw. But remember, I. I briefly touched upon the 2.83 volt um, standard of sensitivity. Well, it's a standard that you have when you're making speakers that's really useful uh, to, 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 to create what's called a crossover and to, to make the whole design. So it's really, it's something I don't really want to talk too much about in this video because it's not really that relevant. But what you have to know is that if you have a speaker that has rated the sensitivity at uh, 2.83 volts instead of one watt, is that when you have a four ohm load, that's gonna cost you a three decibels compared to the earlier calculation. Because at um, at 2.83 volts and a 4 ohm load, you have, all, you have spent 2 watts at that. So if you had a speaker that was rated at 96 dB or decibels uh, at 2.83 volts, you will have this, it will be the same, it will be the same uh, sensitivity as the 93 at 1 watt. More things at work is the distance to the speaker. All of what we had talked about previous in this video is at one meter's distance, which is about three feet. And so all these sound pressure levels are what we have been talking about is that distance, the three feet, one meter. Okay. But what happens if you move twice that distance away? like two meters or six feet. Well, it goes down by six decibels. So double the distance is equal to six decibels less. Okay, so if we took the speaker from earlier that ended up at 112 decibels average, we would be down to 106 decibels at two meter or six feet distance. If we increase that to double that, four meters or 12 feet, then we'll be down to 100 decibels, like 12 decibels less than where we started at, at one meters distance. The last element I wanna bring in to all of this is what's called room gain. Room gain is where your sound waves are hitting walls, ceiling and floor, and bounces back and gets back at you and you get some of all of those along with the direct sound from the speaker 
all of them are ganging up on ruining your hearing now. And that's increasing also, particularly in the low frequency, like down in the bass, when you start to make your room smaller, so the more reflections will come to you. That is also why that if you want an honest decibel reading from a decibel meter, like to, to read like how, how loud this thing is, you should go outside on an open field on a quiet day, like no wind out there, because wind is gonna carry these sound waves as well. Or, you know, they themselves are basically sound. So on a quiet day, out on open field, and then measure from one meter or three feet away, and you get yourself an accurate reading of how loud it is. I'm gonna leave you with a little video clip from this year's uh, CES 2020 when you visited Earthquake uh, Sound on their booth. Ken from Audio Talk, and thank you for watching and have fun with your projects. Take care, guys. Bye.